So we're back with everyone's favorite ongoing series, me reacting to woke TikToks. Today I have quite the interesting set of videos, so let's get to it. Here goes nothing. So my dad is running for president of the United States as a Republican, and I'm not joking. He announced it to my family a few months ago, and he went public a few weeks ago. I was very shocked. My dad has no political experience, but he has been secretly writing a book for the past two years, a 400-page manifesto of all of his political beliefs. He sent me a rough draft of the book, and oh my gosh, there is a lot to unpack. I did not realize he was so conservative. Anti-renewable energy, pro-fracking, pro-capitalism, of course, so much more. He had three chapters on LGBT issues, which I hated. He essentially said that the government shouldn't bully schools into accepting trans people. And then he threw me under the bus saying, it's okay, my non-binary child approves this message. I do not. I told my dad I was hurt by his opinions, and he called me a liar and threatened to sue me if I share his book. My dad also made a TikTok video, which he promptly deleted, probably because the comments were just ripping him to shreds. One of his bits was that he doesn't say his name. He wants you to go to Amazon to buy his book, and there you will learn his name? It's ridiculous, it doesn't make any sense. Most of my family does not support him. He admitted that he doesn't think he's going to win, he's basically just doing this for attention. And he thinks he's going to make money from this, somehow. Anyways, don't vote for my dad for president. And you don't even know his name, so problem solved, I guess. You know, you know one of Your father is a genius. <laughs> That's the only thing that I'm gonna say. It's interesting how you identify as non-binary, something that you don't really have to prove or look a certain way for these days. You can pretty much just be, you know, call yourself trans and just be non-binary and wear whatever the fuck you want. And that's just you expressing yourself. So it's interesting how you chose something that you could easily just take off like a mask to basically promote your father's campaign, like the reverse psychology of it all. Don't vote for my father. Don't go on Amazon and check out his book at this specific link that's coming out on this specific day, you know, with a forward by Martha Stewart. Like, the promotion is very obvious to somebody that has a working brain. So, you know, applause to your father because that's a, that was a smart marketing campaign. One of the reasons why cis people think they're real or natural or the default is because they've fallen into the trap of the myth of white supremacy. Yup, they're connected. So if you think things like trans women aren't women, or if you call people trans but then refuse to call yourself cis if you're cis, that means that you have been influenced by one of the original influencers. The siblings, the twin siblings of colonialism and the myth of white supremacy. And those twin influencer siblings get paid by capitalism to influence. They have literally influenced you to believe that there is a version of a man and a woman that is more human than all the other versions. Sound familiar? Yep. White dominant culture, colonialism, capitalism, they've been working real hard on us. Remember, just like with any influencer trend that is toxic, we don't have to believe it and we don't have to follow it. And in fact, we can even point out the ludicrousness and make it completely obsolete. Right, so let's go ahead and point out the ludicrousness of the bullshit that was just spouted to both of us, to all of us. Um, ridiculous to equate white supremacy with fucking everything. And that's something that people are doing nowadays, these days, very often it's equated to absolutely everything fat phobia as well if you if you didn't know is also white supremacy is upholding white supremacy somehow everything ties back to white supremacy everything ties back to something that we can all just guilt white people for everything is their fault i think it's interesting how somehow we're able to tie everything back to white supremacy as if like white people are the one group that it's like okay to hate on it's, it's pretty creepy it's weird it's it's very racist maybe that's the word i'm looking for oh i just put it over here the baby has been able to latch but 
I've not been able to produce any milk. This whole birth certificate thing is, is really, it's really causing me a lot of hurt. Trans women can be mothers. We are mothers. I'm your mother. No, you're not. And there's been a lot of talk lately about whether or not it is ethical for, you know, shout out to, I believe his name is Michael Knowles or no, Mike, Mike Wall, Ma Matt Walsh, Matt Walsh. Shout out to Matt Walsh for saying that it's better for a child to grow up without an arm than to grow up with a gay parent. Because it's far better for a child to be raised lacking one of his arms than to be raised lacking one of his parents. There's been a lot of talk lately about whether or not it's ethical or it's okay for a child to have two parents of the same sex. And unfortunately, these are the kind of people that make people like that think that they're right. Because this is child abuse. This is like basically Munchausen by proxy. Like you're delusional, you have problems within yourself and you're pushing that onto your child. How is that pushing it onto the child? Well, they're trying to breastfeed. The child has a nipple in its mouth that is not lactating. And the person is concerned, upset as to why they are not lactating. That's, that's, that's something in here that needs to be addressed that is being pushed onto a child that has no choice of anything else. Like the child does not have an option there to not have that man's nipple in its mouth. When people ask me what my pronouns are, and I'm like, yeah, they or she is fine. It's true. But when someone uses they for me, I feel like flooded with warmth. And when someone uses she for me, I'm like, I exist. I've been perceived. So it's fine, especially if you're queer. But if you a straight person, I'm not a she to you. Okay, well, we found another thing to hate straight people for, apparently. Again, we're going back to the straight, white. It always goes back to the same aggressor. Um, this is yet another example of something going on in the mind that needs to be addressed. Because you shouldn't care that much about how other people perceive you. I've been perceived. You shouldn't care so much about how other people perceive you. You really should not, especially as an adult. If you were a teenager, then maybe I would look at this a little differently. First of all, I wouldn't be reacting to a teenager because it's inappropriate to hate on somebody who hasn't even had an opportunity to form themselves. But <clears throat> not to say that I'm hating on these people, but just to say that I'm not going to give a harsh critique or a harsh reaction to a child. But anyway, as an adult... You shouldn't care these this much about things like this. You should have a more firm grip on yourself, on your personality, on your well-being. This is concerning, to say the least. I describe myself as agender because internally, when I think of me, I don't associate me with any gender. And not in a way that's like, I could go any way, I'm cool with all pronouns. I am specifically no thank you to gender. A lot of people would say, but you look so fat! I know! It's useful sometimes. I grew out my hair this long because I've been a performer for six years and I found that I got better tips when I flipped my hair around, so I look that way. But when I think inside and I introspect about what I want from gender, powerful, intimidating, biblically accurate angel. I don't really feel gender euphoria at all. I just don't want it. For me, gender isn't a part of my identity. Gender is a tool that I use to get what I want. If you're following along and questioning your identity at home, take a second to think about what exactly you want from gender and what part of it gives you euphoria. And like and follow for more gender fuckery from this series this week as we talk about movement and gender presentation and the moment that I started questioning my gender. So you basically like gender only when you can use it to your advantage. So what you're saying to the community of people that you are saying in this whole video that you want to represent or that you're part of or whatever is that you only give a fuck about them when you can use them for your TikTok views. First of all, way to be an ally. <laughs> and second of all, it's interesting how you've managed to make a video talking about the fact that you do not look or 
want any sort of gender attached to you as a human being yet you could not present more female if you tried like you could not be more of a mix of jessica rabbit and taylor swift if you tried this goes back to non-binary people presenting like the yellow beret person (laughs) in the jubilee trans versus conservatives debate okay i'm gonna go buy me a gun and i'm gonna come back and set this motherfucker off I don't know about that one. I don't know if I really have an opinion on things like that. Um, Yes, hairstyles maybe predominantly are started by certain cultures or maybe are worn in a certain fashion in a certain part of the world. But it's like, do y'all not remember that at one point we used to be called Pangea? Like at one point we were literally all part of one continent. And before then we were, I believe we were connected by a fucking landmass, an ice bridge where people literally brought one culture cultures from one side to the other culture spread and that's how they stay alive and if you want to keep your culture so into your demographic whatever that demographic may be at one point you know were you to be so unlucky i don't know let's just say that someday for whatever reason i don't know there's some really big romanian culture in europe and they one day throw a freaking bomb on romania and there's like nobody else left in Romania besides the people that live in other parts of the world that left Romania. I don't fucking know. And all of those things, all of the like that culture's identity was basically lost to time because they were just like, oh, we're just going to keep it here. It's not really how it works. It's not really how it should work. We, we should be able to go ahead and, and share things with each other. So, I guess, if you want to be so fucking pressed about it. Here it goes. Pan is is a Greek Greek prefix which refers refers to everything or all. So, So pan gender gender refers to a person whose gender gender identity is not limited to one gender. And it may encompass all genders at once. One very important thing to note, pan genders do not try to identify with ethnic genders outside their own cultures. I hope that helps because mom had to do a little bit of research. (laughs) It doesn't help. And it's definitely not helping the children on TikTok who probably saw this video too. Uh, Just very confusing. No, you cannot identify with more than one gender. And no, you cannot identify as he, she, they. It's not really how it works. First of all, you can't believe in a gender binary and then attach they to that, which apparently, according to y'all, is not part of the gender binary. You don't, you know, you don't live in gender or, or female, in male or female. So... You cannot do that. That's just not, it literally doesn't make sense. I'm sure that somebody will find a way to rationalize that and justify it in the comment section, but no, that, that's not really how that works. Go ahead and ask a doctor if you can do that. But to say that you can be both male and female, no, you can't. The only thing even remotely close to that are intersex people. And that's a medical condition that, you know, I believe if I'm not mistaken, you can choose when a baby is very young, you know, what, I guess, gender you would like them to grow up as. I don't know if you can remove one genital or the other. I don't know about that. I'm not going to go into that. But that's pretty much the only thing related closely to what you're talking about. And again, it's a medical condition. Me about the anti-trans conservative rhetoric around like puberty blockers for trans kids is that if they really did care about making sure children weren't being mutilated or weren't being like coerced, they would be the number one advocates for puberty blockers. Not only because they're empirically supported and because they were developed for cisgender people, but because they would realize that forcing somebody to go through a puberty with a dominant hormone that is misaligned with your actual gender, that would be by their terms mutilation because imagine if we sat a bunch of 13 year old cisgender boys around and we were like hey boys um we know that you're boys and we know that you've been boys as long as you've been alive and it's very clear to us that you are boys but we just want to be so sure so we're actually going to make you go through estrogen based puberty instead so that way like when you get to the end of that road and you're 18 you can decide if you still wanted to be that boy that you you know always showed signs that you were Can you imagine if we did that? That would be fucked up. But that's literally what you are doing to trans kids because forcing somebody to go through a puberty with a dominant hormone that is misaligned with your actual gender is a forced mutilation by conservative standards. 
So you would think that they would be the number one advocates for blockers and go, oh my gosh, yeah, why don't we like put a pause on this so that way you can decide and like in a couple years see how you feel. Like, I just wish they would shut up. That is literally not true. And I'm just going to tell you, um, that's not true. And if you would like to find out more on that in an extended form, you can go ahead and you can watch Brianna Ivy's interview with Candace Owens on this topic, or you can actually watch Brianna Ivy's interview with me on this topic, where she goes more into depth on these procedures and everything that she went through and why for her and many children like her who go through these procedures, through these processes, many of them have to go through experimental surgeries because they were put on puberty blockers way too young. What does that mean to you as the viewer who is not educated on this topic? It means that when you go to have your bottom surgery, your sex reassignment surgery, if you were put on puberty blockers too young, the most popular surgery to convert you into a female is the penile inversion surgery. What do they do? They split the penis in half and invert it into the body to create a you know, a vaginal cavity. And guess what happens when you're put on puberty blockers at a young age and don't have an opportunity to develop down there? By the time that they go do the surgery, which subtract two inches from the current length of your member, subtract two inches from that. And that is the depth that a person who goes through this surgery will have. Six inches goes to four inches, four inches goes to two, two inches goes to. So when you're put on puberty blockers and like Jazz Jennings, you grow nothing down there. What tissue will these children have to affirm themselves? They're going to have to go through experimental procedures that are going to basically butcher them, that are going to have many of them describing themselves as disfigured. It's not right. It's not reversible. It's wrong. Drag is an art and drag is a right. Drag is a centuries old art form of creativity, expression and self-exploration. It's an opportunity to educate through entertainment, and it's not dangerous. At Six Degrees, we believe in amplifying the voices of those that are experiencing injustice. So join us in supporting the ACLU Drag Defense Fund by shopping our bonfire campaign or making a gift. Designed by the amazing Mason K, Kira and I are honored to support this important fund, and we welcome you to do the same. So... The moment that celebrities found out that they could use this group, the gay community and the trans community as a way to make money, it was like an instant pot of gold, an instant cash flow of revenue started coming in for these people. Because now even irrelevant actors are jumping into the conversation. And unfortunately, yes, he is irrelevant to the times. So... It's interesting to me how all you have to do is, you know, no other word for it, grift to one side of a community to restart your career, which by the way, I haven't seen him in any movies recently, any big movies recently. So not sure what's going on there. Apparently we're trying to, <laughs> Apparently, we're trying to go ahead and make a name for ourselves by being an activist. Good luck with that. Drag is not a right. Drag is an art form. I don't, I don't think that, you know, many people would deny that. Obviously, if somebody hates drag and hates the whole thing, I'm sure that they would have many colorful things to say about it. No pun intended. But you know, you 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 put on a costume, you you perform. So yes, it, it can be described as an art form. But it's not a right. You know, none of those things are a right. Theater isn't a right. It's not like riding the bus or, you know, having the right to uh, a fucking lawyer when you get arrested. It's not a right. That doesn't make any sense. 
And I don't think anybody is trying to outlaw drag. I think they're trying to outlaw drag in front of minors, which is a different conversation, a conversation that I'm all for. I don't think a child should be in an adult venue enjoying an adult type of entertainment. It's pretty Hi, inappropriate. I primarily go by eat, I'm or Z's on pronouns, but I'm comfortable being referred to using any neo pronouns that are not Z here. And a little bit about who I am. I am a white, transmasculine, femme, non-binary, disabled, neurodivergent, obsessive, compulsive, chronically ill, unitarian, universalist, raised Jewish, non-monogamous, demi-low-romantic, gray, demi-bisexual, survivor of acute and complex trauma, millennial, and cat parent in mental health. What up, bitch? It's currently 11. I... Okay, I'm still here. I don't know what to say to that i don't know what to say to that there was there was we we at this point we have to write a book there was there was enough in there to write a new dictionary wow so hey we can start from the inside out go on and kill them crackers girl go ahead and kill them motherfucking crackers you'll make our lives easier plus if anybody should do it girl it should be you if anybody should get rid of the white man it should be the white woman you birthed that motherfucker what mamas always say, I brought you in, I can take you out. You brought that motherfucker into the world. Take his ass the fuck out, girl. Take his ass the fuck out. You already know which ones need to go. Well, someone's sick in the head. Someone's very racist and very sad and very lonely internally to be able to go on a rampage about that, about an entire group of people who you don't know you know it's kind of difficult for you to know an entire group of people it's very sad and i think that you know it's only fair to turn the coin over and picture this being a white woman um talking about how the black woman should be able to take out the black man because she birthed him everybody would be having quite a visceral reaction to that but somehow we have adopted a mindset in our culture where to something like this, we're not allowed to react to it or have an extended opinion on it or think, oh, that's that's wrong. We're supposed to be like, ah, oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> ah. awkwardly laugh through it like it's normal and it's not some sort, of, some sort of new age mental illness. Sad. I wish her luck. Wow. All right, this one's for the ladies. If you're not a lady, you can stay. For now but don't act like a clown in my comments okay i hear way too many women talking about how they date guys that they're not physically attracted to because they're usually kinder to them and there's a whole lot of things to unpack with that first this is really only a message pushed onto women men are rarely if ever told oh come on give her a chance maybe she's a nice girl men with high standards are confident women with high standards are picky Wanting to be physically attracted to someone that you're going to be fucking for the rest of your life is not a high standard. I'm not saying looks are everything. I'm saying women tend to be the only ones who are told to sacrifice it in order to find someone who won't treat them like shit. Moving forward, I will exclusively be dating people who are both hot and kind. That's still a very low bar! I mean... I think it's ignorant and stupid and, and really dumb for anybody to pretend like somebody's looks doesn't influence your interest in them at all. To the people that are like, oh, I just, you know, I'm interested in personality. Sweetie, you can be interested in personality, but when you walk up to somebody where well, you're not given a file about what their personality is like. So obviously something attracted you to that person. And what was that? Hmm. Maybe your eyes. That's a good clue. Well, that was interesting, <laughs> as it always is. I'm sure you guys have a lot to say about this one, so sound off in the comments. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Feel free to follow me on any of my social medias. I have to talk about that more often, and I'll see you on the next one.